I've got a bunch of uh, backgammon uh, tutorials on my channel, how to play backgammon for beginners, advanced backgammon. So I just wanted to make another video where I just played a game and you could watch me play. So this um, will answer a lot of people's questions on, on things that maybe they weren't clear about in my, my how-to games. So I'm black. Um, the computer on the other side is white. And I'm trying to get all my pieces here and white is trying to get all their pieces up here and we're going to start by rolling the dice. If you want to know, you know how to play the game, I got a ton of videos on how to play. I move first, it's a five and a six, and if you've watched my video on best moves for opening, uh, best opening moves, you'll know that the best opening moves are right here. I'm black, I thought I got it, I thought I won. Or did the computer do it? Weird. Oh, I guess that was a... Okay, some places you have to take that opening move. In this particular case, I guess that it means I won, so I roll. All right, so six and a three. Again, there's two good opening moves for six and three. One is to go six and three. Um, another one is to go six and three. I'm actually going to go for the first one because I like to get my pieces around the board. So there's the six, and there's the three. Computer's turn. That's a great opening move, six and a four, because they make a point already. Um, and they start to do. One of, of course, the worst opening moves you can get is a five and a two. In this case, I'm going to have to go two, and then I'll just go five. Um, what I'm looking for are pieces to be open. I want the white to have single pieces that I can take off. Um, and right now, they're doing a very good job of keeping things uh, pretty well. So I'm going to go two and I'm going to go one. I have no other way to uh, really keep my pieces all organized. And I need to get this piece out eventually. Right now, white's playing a really good game. Okay, so another two and a one. Well, in this case, I'll have to go two, but I still don't want to expose my people by moving one, so I'll just have to do this again. I could get taken off, but at least if I get taken off, I come back in this area, so I'm not going far. See, now, because this piece is past me, there's no other piece here, it's okay to sort of be, you know, um, a single there. All right, a four and a five. I still need to clean myself up. And this four and a five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, it does put me there. I'm going to move all the way around and get me to here in hopes that, oops, I guess they like me to do it the other way, four and then a five. I'm going to do this in hopes that these people don't get me. Because if they got a six and a three, they would have gotten me. Now that I'm past all of this, they're just starting to move all their pieces in. And what they're doing is they're playing a back game. In other words, they're going to try to make it so that this is pretty cleaned up with a minimum of two white checks in each of these things so that if they do manage to take me off, it's hard for me to get back on the board to keep playing. I'm actually, I'm actually very behind on this game. So uh, one of the things that I could do is I can start to make it difficult for this two over here that he hasn't moved. So there's a six and there's a one in hopes that it's harder for him to get out. I'm still exposed here with this, and he's setting himself up here. What I want to do now is start to um, clean this up. So I'm going to go three, and I'm going to go one. I want to start leaving no singles, and I want to start making it hard for him to get these pieces out. The longer I can do that, the better chance I have to catch up, since he's ahead of me here. Six and a one. Didn't we just have a six and a one? Um, okay, so again, I want to keep this fairly organized, so I'm going to go six, and I'm going to go one. Now, the reason I'm bringing these down is because there isn't really a role for him to get over here without a six, and I've blocked his six. He's done a very good job. See what I'm saying? There's no, uh, there's no open men, and he'll probably use these to close the board up, up there if he can. I still, however, have to start getting a lot of men around here, but I still want to start closing the board on this guy. So there's a four, and there's a two. Yes, I'm leaving a man exposed, fingers crossed, but I also want to start closing the board on him. Three and a four. Okay, one, two, so what do I want to do? Uh, let's go like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Starting to close the board on him, still keeping my fingers crossed on these. Good. Now he is 
So a six can get them out. I have to be careful now with these open pieces and clean them up. So one will clean that up. Two, three will make it harder on him, and four, I've got to hide this guy. Now, with a six, he can get a guy out. And he, that's the only six he can take, since all these men are within six points, so he's forced to move that one out. It's good, and now leaves this guy open, which I could take off and close the board, sort of like the game he's playing up here. Or maybe I can get this guy off and slow things down some more. Let's see what I get. A six and a one. Well, I don't really have a way to take anyone off here. I can't get somebody off with a one or a six. I can't get this guy off for, with a one or a six. I also, however, need to think about keeping my board organized, and this is a very bad roll for me. Because if I move this six to here, this one will be exposed. If I move this six to here, this one will be exposed to this guy. I can move this six all the way to the end, which is fine, but I still have to move a one somewhere and, ex and open something up. I think I'm going to do it. There's the six. I have no one. I could take him off, but then I'd have two exposed. So I'm going to open this one up and hope that he doesn't get a five. That's all I can do. Hope he doesn't get a five. Three, four. He got that one out, but he still has this one exposed. Now, a, a roll like a five and a four would be awesome right now. Um, so, I definitely can. I don't want to, if I take him off, I don't want to keep an exposed man. So I think I'm going to have to play the safe here and go one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and not take him off. It gives him a chance to run, which he didn't. So, let's see. I wish I, if I took him off, hmm. I'm going to go five. Whoops. I'm going to go, oh, it's four and a one. I thought it was a five and a one. Okay. So, this doesn't help me because I could go one, but I, I have too many men open. I could go four. Let's do it just so we can learn. And then let's go one and hope he doesn't get a six. He can't. He didn't get a six. So that was great. And now he's on the board. Let's try to cover this up with a six. Nice. And now the only thing that will allow him to get on the board is a 2. Let's move this 2. If he doesn't get a 2, great. He can't get on the board. And this gives me a chance to catch up. 6, no, I'm sorry, 2 and a 3. Again, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Let's see. The only thing that he can get on, oh, I see. I have to do it one at a time. 3 and 2. The only thing he can do to get on the board right now is get a 2. No 2, so he's still there. Okay, so now I've got another three and a two. I can start to move things around. I would, I could move three and two, but I don't want to take a risk here. So what I'm going to do is go one, two, three, one, two, and just hope he doesn't get a two. Okay, I got to do one. I'm sorry, three and two, and just hope he doesn't get a combination that lets him hit, get here. Great. Okay, so six and one. I can move this one six. And even though I could take this one off now, I don't want to expose that one. So I'm just going to move this guy and see if he can get on board. See, now that he is still on board, I have to be careful because he could jump and take me off. And then I've got to start all the way back on that side. But I am able to start taking things off. So there's a six. But instead of taking the three and exposing this, I'm just going to go one, two, three. I don't want to keep any open men if I can help it. And he's now forced to move because he's on the board. So now I can do whatever I want. It's a race because he's got to get all this, this man all the way around and all off the board. I've already got one off the board. He's got a little bit of a better board than me, but hopefully I'll catch up as he starts to come around. Doubles have not been a factor in this game at all. So at this point, it could help someone who pulls doubles at the last second, and I'm going to, that's a six, and that's a two. And as you can see, since I didn't have a six, I can take off the five. If I didn't have a six and a five, I could have taken off the four. So I've got four off, he's got two off now. Let's see, now it's a little bit of a race. Doubles are going to start to play a factor. I'll take a three off, and I'll take a one off. I could have taken a four, but at this point, it's about getting all your men off. So I, I always, oh, he's, he's got doubles there. And he has a better board than me. 
he may beat me if I don't get a good set of doubles. I don't have a six, so I can take the one next to it, five, and I can take two. At this point, it's just about getting enough, well, uh, another set of doubles. And he's got seven men left. I have six. My position is slightly better than his, but it all comes down to doubles and high rolls right now. So I don't have a six or a five, so I have to take them both off from the four. Okay. Oh, we got the six and the five as well. We're still fairly close here. It's going to come down to potentially doubles here. I don't have a six, so the next closest one is the four, is uh, this four, and then a two. But that has to move to. So this is how I could slow down the game. Well, obviously he's going to win on the very next turn unless he gets a 2 or a 1. If he gets a 3 and a 1, he's 1. If he gets anything above a 2 and a 1, he's 1. I've got four men left. Unless I get double 3s or higher, which would be double 3s, double 4s, double 5s, double 6s, he's 1. These three doubles in the end he got are were great. So I may have lost unless he gets a 2 and a 1. There's the 5, because it's the closest for the 5, and there's the 1. If he gets better than a 2 and a 1, which he did, he wins. Oh, well. Well, that's what happens when you don't get doubles. But I hope you learned a lot. Bye.